Oh, hey there. It's your old friend, Mr. Kern. Just want to talk to you a little bit about this pay range table. I had a couple students build for me this year just for my personal shop. They made a video that kind of shows how how it works and how to put face room together and everything, but I just kind of wanted to get in a little bit more detail on how we actually built it in case anybody's wanting to build one themselves just so they had some more information. It's not real complex. Um, so to start with, you know, we just made the frame, which I'll take you around to the back, show you that. It's basically a piece of angle iron on the top, angle iron on the bottom, angle iron on the sides, and then all square tubing in the middle. Approximately 16 inches on center. It's a little bit over that because it's a little over 8 foot. If I was going to do it again, we would put square tubing on the top and bottom because this angle iron had a little bit more flex than I anticipated, which is why when we, when we, had, when we put this arm up here, Ended up having to add a brace in to support it because it just had a little bit too much flex, more than I liked. So once he had the frame built, you know, it's a prox, it's a little bit oversized, but it's about four by eight. Um, we tried to figure out what angle we wanted it at, so we just kind of messed around with it and then took some measurements and stuck those in. This one's just in case you're wondering. This one's 60 and a quarter to the top. That's from the from the, this is a piece of angle iron. It's 60 and a quarter. This one's 31 and a quarter. And from the back of this one to the back of this one is what was it? I don't remember. 14 and a half inches. So I feel like with that you could probably kind of figure out that angle. And so the angle iron just kind of it just it just kind of goes around that square tubing. I did at one point. I thought about bolting it so so it'd be easier to disassemble and move and stuff. But I knew that I was probably only going to move it a couple times, and so I figured that'd be good. Uh, while I'm back here, well, I'll tell you the so the the two legs. Then these are just welded down to a big piece of. It's almost square tubing. It's kind of rectangular tubing. Just a heavy piece that I had. And then we just have four angle irons going across here just to give it some bracing that way. And even without these, it was actually pretty, pretty solid. We just added those also just so we could have some shelves on there. Uh, that's pretty much, pretty much that. While I've got you back here, I'm going to show you how this track is attached it's pretty simple the the air travels through a piece of two inch square tubing that's just got caps on the end it's all and it's threaded and then that just sits inside of a two and a half inch square tubing with a couple bolts that just tension it together and they're not drilling through or anything and then we just have a piece of angle iron that travels about an eighth of an inch underneath the square tubing on top. So there's about an eighth of an inch space. And then we just got these wheels and drilled the hole in here and figured out where we wanted them and tacked them on. And it actually, well, once we tacked it, then we welded it, but actually works pretty good. On the other side, very similar. You got a piece of angle iron here with a piece of square tubing welded to it with another piece of square tubing that, that the main piece goes through. And it's all we did for most of these is we just drilled a hole and we welded a nut to the hole. That way we could tighten and loosen these for taking it apart. We did these, the thing that actually holds the cylinder, we did them the same way. So that, that allows that to be loosened and tightened. But we had to cut a slot in the square tubing so that way, if this thing had to pass by, if it had to pass by the air fitting, it'd be able to, to go by there. So, you know, I feel like the, the frame and the table, everything by itself, you know, anybody can build. Well, I feel like anybody can build any of it, but it's not that complicated. But it did take a little bit of trial and error on the pneumatic parts of it. Yeah, originally, just thinking about it, I knew we could build that. I just wasn't sure how all this would work out. And I feel like, you know, once we had this thing figured out how we were going to mount it, then we just had to take a measurement 
here and make sure this arm was going to be up the same amount and that told us where to weld that i mean that was pretty simple and then this part was kind of the sort of tricky part but also i'm, I'm not 100 percent satisfied with it like these lock down come back up but these these cylinders are definitely overkill they're uh i think they're called i bought them on amazon they're like 22 bucks pretty inexpensive i think they're called a 40 by 100 pneumatic cylinder they're like 20 bucks 22 maybe and very very reasonably priced i mean we weren't sure how we were going to mount them because you, you they didn't come with any sort of mounting thing so we just took a piece of square tubing and it's got sort of like some angle iron they're sort of like shins they kind of make it smaller but also when we when we tighten there's a bolt up here to tighten it down so when you tighten that it doesn't put the pressure on the cylinder it kind of smashes those angle irons together and then the cylinder didn't come with switches so this switch i got it's called a tail tail ons t-a-i-l-o-n-z pneumatic model 4h210-08 and it's good i just uh I, I, I guess these are two stage cylinders so there's pressure when it's pushed down and pressure pushing it up and the ones the tables that I'm used to are one stage so there's less hoses there's just one hose instead of two but I mean overall for what we paid I mean we, we had about 350 in metal um, maybe 50 bucks for the metal mean uh, maybe a hundred bucks in in cylinders and air hose and fittings and whatnot, uh, some paint. I mean, for what I have in it, it's pretty good. It's way. I mean, I, before this, I'd build things on my workbench. I have one of those little hold down clamp things, you know. For what we have in it, I mean, they're what well, they're selling for four thousand dollars. I'm not going to say this is worth four thousand dollars, but that's what I would have had to pay for a new one, having to pay only a little over five hundred. And plus those kids, I mean, they loved it. They were, they soaked it up. Like, like it originally just started with one kid and then the other kid was over there so much. I was just like, well, why don't you get your witch out project done real quick and then you can help them. Obviously, he didn't cut any corners on his witch out project, but he, he hurried and got it done. I'll tell you one cool thing we got to do was these, the pistons came, they didn't come with a foot on it. And so we got to go to a <clears throat> got a local gunsmith. So he showed the kids how to run the metal lathe, and we had a big, big hunk of aluminum. So they they got to dress it down a little bit, finish the end off, and then drill a hole and and run some threads in there. So that was a pretty cool part of the project. Um, and the kids kids really thought that was cool too. Well, I appreciate you watching. And I hope uh, if you're interested in building one of these, I've inspired you. It's not it's not that hard, really. It just uh, took a little time, took a little figuring out. But I feel like I'm really going to enjoy this. I know the kids enjoyed making it. And they won a big fancy award for building it, too. So that, that was nice, too. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching.